Hey, hey guys, it's Chuck. Alright, welcome back. Alright, got a new one here uh, for you today. I'm, and now I'm working on one I will be publishing tonight with uh, a cool little Metasploit hack. But uh, this one I, I had to do uh, today on, on OAuth. Because something just surfaced uh, with OAuth 2 that it is possible that over 1 billion mobile apps, Android and iPhone, uh, have a pretty large vulnerability in them. Uh, and these come from apps that use OAuth authentication. Uh, again, 1 billion mobile apps using OAuth 2. And I will guarantee you on your phone you've done this to a multitude of things so I'm going to explain OAuth first and then we're going to get into the vulnerability of OAuth uh, of course I can't I can't show you this because of the sheer amount of setup it would take and there's so much stuff that's behind the scenes you know I wouldn't be able to show it to you and, and show the weakness without actually hitting a real site uh, and I really don't want to go to prison this week so uh, just follow me along here and uh, and take a look at this so this is what is going on now I have in here a game it, it doesn't matter and I have desktops here just so you can see them but these are typically on smartphones uh, but it can be on desktops too now if it's done the right way this is how OAuth works then when you see it I guarantee you've clicked it before let's say Jim launches a game well you know a lot of games on your phone so you can you know multiple things you can get some extra stuff or or whatever I want you to sign in and I, I'm just gonna say Facebook I'm not picking on Facebook just Facebook is one of the biggest ones so Jim launches this game the game is gonna say hey Hey Jim, why don't you just go ahead and log in with Facebook? So Jim, so he doesn't have to create a new account, just goes ahead and logs in with Facebook. Well, this is what happens. The game is going to do two things at the same time. It's going to send Jim a page where he can log into Facebook. And it's also going to query Facebook and say, Hey, hey, Facebook, he just clicked the link. I need a set of keys. Well, Facebook is going to respond back and say, oh, okay, yep, well, you know, we've connected, we, we trust each other, here's the consumer key and a secret, and that's so they can verify each other. The game can verify Facebook, Facebook can verify the game. Okay, that's good. Well, Jim logs in, puts in his Facebook username and password. The game is going to respond back to Facebook. Say, hey, yep, thank you very much. I got the consumer key. I got the secret. I need a request token. In which case, Facebook is going to respond back and say, here is the request token for Jim. Now, it doesn't pass Jim's username and password to the game. It just passes a request token for Jim. So his username and password is never transferred to the game. It stays on Facebook. It's a really cool idea. Now the game has the request token. It is now going to send that to Jim. Say, hey Jim, here's the token. Can you send that to Facebook and click yes, I allow game to access Facebook to post on my wall? And Jim goes, yeah, sure. I click the allow button. So Jim clicks the allow, bu allow button, which now allows Facebook and the game to link together. That's the way it's supposed to work. It's a, it's a very cool way to do it. There are more steps involved. There's actually a whole lot of handshaking going on. We actually call this a love triangle because uh, it's, it's three machines that are required for this thing to work. This is far more advanced than a three-way handshake. There's multiple handshakes going on, sometimes simultaneously. So that's how it's supposed to work. So 
After Jim presents that token to Facebook and clicks the allow button, Facebook is going to say, hey, game, Jim just authorized you, here's the access token. So now the game can post on Jim's Facebook page, you know, whenever it feels like it. That's the right way to implement it. They found a vulnerability in it. Now, OAuth 2, as I always tell my classes, OAuth 2 is, even though it's supposed to be more secure, has actually become less secure than OAuth 1. Because there's so much configuration that you have to do with OAuth 2 because it is open source. There's so much configuration you have to do. If you configure it correctly, it works great. If you don't know how to configure it, there's going to be a problem. And, and that's the case when it comes to all security measures. So this is the problem. Jim can actually set up a proxy uh, to collect data packets between the game and Facebook. So the steps are going to roughly be the same. Jim is going to open up the game and uh, he's going to get to that page and ask him to log in with Facebook. And again, he's going to put in, Jim's going to put in his real username and password. The game is also going to say, hey, Facebook, he clicked on the Facebook link. I need the keys. And Facebook's going to say, yeah, sure. Here's the consumer keys and here's the secret. In which case, the game's going to send back and says, oh, yeah, thanks for the keys, man. But I need the request token. Well, Jim's in the middle of all this. If if Jim kind of breaks in right there, he can modify the data inside of there to where it asks for a request token from someone else. Anybody else's Facebook page. He does not need their password. He just needs their username. So he switches the username from his username to someone else's username. In which case Facebook responds back, here you go, here's a request for Steve. The game is going to send that to Jim and say, hey Steve, give this token to Facebook so we can link together. In which case Jim's just going to present that to Facebook, click on OK. And Facebook's going to say, hey, yep, Steve's authorized you. Here's his access token. And now Jim is in the game as Steve. The steps look exactly the same. Jim has just set up a proxy. Now, it's not easy. But he has set up a proxy to modify the data that goes back and forth. This is the problem. This would never work if OAuth was set up correctly. This is the problem. If OAuth 2 is not configured, it does not even look at the access token. That access token is actually linked to the username and password that is put in in the beginning. That's what it's built from. It doesn't have the username and password in it, but it's built from the username and password that Jim put in in the beginning, which was his. But if OAuth 2 is not configured correctly, it doesn't even look at the access token. It only looks for two things. Is the person a user? In which it only looks at the username, and it only checks to see if it comes from Facebook. If those two things are true, then Jim gets into the game with that person's username and having it come from Facebook. He doesn't know Steve's password. Now what can he do in the game? Well, he can do whatever he wants to. But this isn't just for games. This is for any site that you ever go to that says log in with Facebook, log in with Twitter, log in with this. Doesn't matter. They all use some version of OAuth. So if they're not configured correctly, this would immediately fail if Jim busted in 
change the credentials after the first set of credentials and it says Steve authorized you here's the access token the game is gonna go mm, nope sorry they don't match that's supposed to be Jim's access token you got Steve and you're gonna get a failure OAuth is a very very complex it's, it's, it's kind of if you look at Kerberos you look at Kerberos on the high end it, it seems pretty straightforward it only it's only like seven steps if you really look at the details of Kerberos it's actually about 26 steps uh, there's a lot of handshaking going on and, and same with OAuth it's a lot more than this but you get the idea there's a ton of of games out there and apps out there that have not configured OAuth correctly and this has now been published out uh, and I will guarantee you uh, in the not so distant future we're gonna start hearing games that have been hacked or apps that have been busted into by using this OAuth issue again it, it, it just came out I just received the alert this morning um, but some researchers uh, from University of Hong Kong uh, have figured out this problem and actually presented it they did it on an Android and they were able to bust into it and get into somebody else's app by just changing one packet and they did not know that person's password so one billion mobile app accounts could possibly be affected and this this came through on Friday so just wanted to put that out to you unfortunately there is absolutely nothing that we can do on the security side to stop this because um, we can't get our hands on the the coding uh, but just wanted you to be aware that it is out there and uh, be on the lookout for it all right guys so a little different video here actually a little more informational video than having fun but uh, I do want to put a, a, a shout out to everybody who has subscribed to the channel and who have liked the videos I, I really do appreciate it uh, that's the whole reason I'm making these things is, is uh, every time I run across something that I think is just fun or, or uh, interesting to, to build one on I'm gonna build it I'm gonna post it out there um, so continue to hit that like button hit that subscribe button let me know what you think about them if there's anything that you guys want to see I'm more than happy to do it um, I said I'm working on a couple of them on some SQL injections uh, and tonight I plan on posting one up on a, uh, a Metasploit attack um, to where we can steal a token um, and pretty much gain access all through a network enterprise without having to put in a username and password even if they have logins every time we try to go to a shared drive uh, we'll just pass the token off to them every time that it goes to ask us for a username and password so plan on posting that one on later on tonight again keep hitting that like button let me know if there's anything you guys want to see keep commenting I appreciate it uh, if the channel gets big I mean I'm gonna continue to uh, respond to your comments I try to respond to every single comment I get uh, I'm here for you guys I'm here to here to help you out understanding these some of these complex topics and just to show you some really really cool stuff to do all right until next time gentlemen and ladies I'll see you soon